هنعمل ايه في الحراس First of all, I want to say uh, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, when, when I go to places like this, I, I always find it interesting to talk to the uh, to the range of employees, and I'm, I'm continuously astounded at the at the range of qualifications that are here from different universities or different colleges or different walks of life, and how this moves at such bewildering speed. It's uh, it's quite incredible, and I, I, I said to Colm outside after having read his. Uh, his his CV and his his pedigree in the sense of the of the uh, of his career. It's a, this is a an example, really, a demonstration of belief uh, and vision as to what can actually happen if you decide to take a particular route where you have a view that things are going to <laughs> going to expand in the future. And uh, from that point of view, it's great. Now, I have to tell you a little secret. Mr. Crowley down here and I <clears throat> travelled around Esker Hills down in Offaly there recently and he's a mean hitter of the ball, actually. He's a mean German. Language, <laughs> his language is choice as well when he gets going. Uh, but just to say, it's, uh, the priority of government really is, first of all, to balance our public finances, secondly, to deal with the question of the international crisis that affects a lot of countries retrieve our economic uh, independence and sovereignty, but put the focus of the programme for government on jobs and opportunities, employment and careers. Um, and that's why um, we had the government programme for jobs, for Action for Jobs published um, uh, earlier, earlier last year in respect of the 270 propositions that are in there for, um, for business and for opportunity. And that's why I think it's important that we be able to talk to people like you or your employees and say, look, that's where there's a blockage in red tape, or here's, a, here's an improvement that government could actually assist. Because while governments don't create jobs themselves, it is it's absolutely critical that government listens to business and to people employed in business and say, look, here's another opportunity, here's a better way of doing this. Because if this company stands still, it's dead too in a few years' time because it moves so fast. Uh, and, and, and that's why I think it's, it's really, it enthuses uh, certainly me to talk to the people. So like I've come from this background, this is my screen, this is what I'm doing here, here are my customers, here's the changeover, this is the new structure. And that you can see new opportunities for, for different business, bigger business, better business in the times ahead. Um, 50, 50 new people here over the next 18 months, 28 online at the moment. That's a factory in itself, as it used to be down the country. If people employed 20 people, it was a, was a, it was a pretty major, a major issue. Yesterday, he announced uh, 300 new positions with EA, a gaming company down in Galway. And I, Peter was explaining to me that it's moved from sort of the old consoles and the Nintendo stuff to bewildering billions of people now on handheld uh, handheld connectors in the sense of all being able to play games if that's what they, what they, what they want to do. Uh, and the speed of this is, is, uh, is moving so fast. So I, I hope that when Carapay comes on here, the new subsidiary business, uh, that, you know, having established the international presence in London and Paris, that that actually grows. Um, and I also say, Colm, that uh, we set out 15 months ago to sort of restore a sense of credibility and trust and and uh, international reputation for the country here. I found, I've gone to America on the first few occasions, American business was always saying, like, what are you doing with your corporation tax? What is the position insofar as Ireland is concerned? And we take the time to send ministers who go out there on official business to call to chief executives of corporations and investors to show them that we're serious about restoring that sense of international reputation, and that's paid serious dividends. When you consider the... the um, the arrival of 35,000 Irish Americans for the uh, Notre Dame Navy game recently and the impact that that had on, on this city and on the economy, not just of the Dublin region, but of the, the country in general. And when you think of the potential 
of the gathering for next year to bring back so many people from all over the world to Ireland during the course of that 12 months. Every one of you can have an impact on that as well, even if it's only one of your friends to come over for a weekend from, from London or from wherever else. And if you extend that to families, groups, organisations, sporting people or whatever else. We're having the Presidency of the Union in um, 1st of January to the end of June. There'll be 1,600 meetings will be conducted during the course of those six months. But that means opportunities for, for business, corporations and all that to come here as well and see the facilities that, that, um, that Relax have here or that any other company have and, and what it is to do business in Ireland. Uh, and what really, what really impresses me is the, is the, the energy uh, coming off your workforce here. Like you can sense it, that these are people who are passionate about what they do. And I'm quite sure they're not afraid to say, Colin, we could change direction here, here's something else we can do. Um, and this is a very competitive business. And I, I, I commend you all in that sense. I know that Enterprise Ireland are, are involved here, and this is a, an organisation that has had to grow with a brand of excellence. Because if, you, if we're in the export business and we're doing business outside our own shores, it's important that, that the, the interaction between the, between the uh, state agency and the companies is important. Uh, Sean's down here, and he, he, he did a presentation for our own um, parliamentary party down in, in Westport recently, and he was absolutely focused on what you can do to improve the opportunity for real competence to come in here by uh, technological visas for companies and for people who've got a, a particular skill that's just not available here now. I was a, uh, that's the kind of you know, um, revolution that you need to be able to say, shake things up and make them better. And that's what good government is actually about here. Uh, it's clear that Irish businesses have to start trading online and the more that, that's done, the better. And uh, that's why, you know, Minister Rabbit uh, announced recently the national broadband system, which is paying big dividends around the country, which means that the, um, the journalist or the editor or whatever who lives down on, on Ackle Head can be the same as if they're in central Tokyo with the, with the facilities that are now there. It might interest you to know that we've... Um, I didn't understand what latency between banks was in terms, of, uh, in terms of time and what it means, but the shortest distance between trading banks is an issue from, from Wall Street to uh, London to uh, Paris and Frankfurt. Um, and of course that's on the Great Circle, and the Great Circle for some reason or other in this area of business never came through Ireland. It went around every other way but in here, because we had problems with foreshore licensing and all that sort of stuff, and that's all sorted out. There are a number of companies that are seriously interested now in putting new cables across the Atlantic with that view in mind. Uh, every millisecond is worth 100 million a year, I understand. So that also has the potential, arriving in Ireland here, to light up the entire country in terms of connectivity. Uh, therefore, there are implications for data content storage, uh, where the union would recognise that there would be 400,000 jobs over a period. These are all opportunities, and they're opportunities for, for, your, for your workforce here and for those uh, with whom they're acquainted to get involved in all of that. Um, so all of, that's, uh, all of that's important. I set out a goal quite some time ago to actually prove uh, that we can be the best country in the world in which to do business by 2016. We've started that process by moving up the competitiveness ladder, by forcing down costs, by changing the... Uh, wage, uh, wage setting mechanisms uh, by continuing to demonstrate that, you know, all the top IT people are here, all the software people are here, the born on the internet companies are here. Um, and so if we, if we get our own uh, challenges dealt with here at home and get a, get a deal uh, with our colleagues in Europe, we can actually develop the cluster of well-developed economies in Western Europe to a point where they can really prosper, be well-managed, be accountable in terms of the people's money, and therefore make an extraordinary impact on, on world trade. Uh, one of the things that's going to come in before the end of the year is a high-level report on the possibilities of trade between Europe and, uh, and the USA. That's an issue that we'll, we'll address during the course of the presidency and hopefully conclude a number of other trade agreements uh, which will both help ourselves and help the, help the continent. President Clinton made the point in, at, at the economic conference he called in January in Washington that you got 500 million uh, in the Union, you have another 600 million on the outskirts and the, on the fringes. Some of these countries in no North Africa are growing at 5, 6, 7 percent a year with extraordinary potential. That continent will, will explode literally in terms of its importance in the next 20 years. 
Um, but he also said that, you know, here in Ireland, you have the best demographics of any country in Europe for the next 25 years. And put that together with your technology and your tax and your talent record and your track record, you've got an unbeatable package. I'd just like to wish you and your workforce, Colin, the very best. Uh, this, is a, this is an exciting day for you, I know. Um, it's an exciting week for me. I have to go and meet the Pope on Saturday and I'm going to tell him <laughs> that I need some divine intervention. That we have waited long enough. 61 years is too long. And while I am a half of Donegal, man, I know they will forgive me, whether it be the hills of Donegal or the plains of Mayo, something is going to erupt the next weekend. And I hope that whatever happens, there is a cracker of a game and that we get the right result, just like Relix. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks very much, Thishak, and thank you to everybody for coming along today. You're, you're very, very welcome to hear. I want to just say particular thanks to Tracy and Paul as well, just for organising this event today. It's been a, a fantastic occasion for us, and certainly very, very proud of to reach this point in, 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 our, in our journey. It was 12, I think, 12 and a half years ago that I was sitting not too far up the, the river from here um, in, a, in a regular job, um, and uh, it's uh, been a long journey to get to this point, but it was... Um, was only with the amazing support of, of family who are ably represented here today, and, and friends and many people within the industry who lended their support. I met some wonderful people along the way, some great in inspirational people. On when we started the business together, we, it was literally just from you know very, very, very beginnings, and today you think that we process over 1.8 billion euro a month through the systems. It's just been a, a wonderful journey, but you don't do it alone. You do it with great help and great support, and that's what we've had over the years, and that's one thing that I know I'm very, very grateful for. We reached a very critical point when we came across a client called Aer Lingus. After being many years in business, we suddenly found this big client. And as a little company of five people, Aer Lingus asked me one day, you know, how can you process 500 million euro worth of payments per annum through? <laughs> we can, believe me, we can. <laughs> and we did. And it was, it was a great example, I think, of how a large indigenous company like Aer Lingus could help a small company like us to get on that ladder. And I think that's a very, very important concept, that there are many, many, many companies here who are large companies and many multinationals who are based here. And as they engage services from smaller companies, what they do for those smaller companies is they give them that leg and that step up the ladder, which is, can be very, very helpful. As soon as we had closed with their lingus, we were knocking at the doors of Virgin Atlantic, and we closed Virgin Atlantic and now processed their worldwide business for them, which we wouldn't have done had we not won that first contract. So you see that these big milestones occur. A couple of years after that, it was Enterprise Ireland convinced me to, to go on the Leadership for Growth programme, and this was 2008. And I watched that, says I, and the Leadership for Growth programme was one of these massively transformational experiences for me where I was challenged personally and the business was challenged and we, we talked about strategy and vision and values and things and I had no idea really what they all were but there was something to do with management and it was a way of, of, of giving me a way to put words on things that I kind of knew was right and it gave me this framework and when we came back from Stanford and the management team we went off site for I don't know maybe 12 different times and we had exercises and deep conversations with each other and we wrote our strategy out and we called it F5, which was a five-year program. And it was F5 because that's the refresh key when you're browsing the web. That's what we wanted to do. And on looking back at that, I can see now that the company is four times the size that it was when we started that program. So we literally grew by a multiple of four on the back of the Leadership for Growth program. And as you said, Tishak, we are in many ways a classic example of being a product of the Enterprise Ireland framework that exists. And Enterprise Ireland, if it, you know, it played a critical role to taking us to this point, and it obviously plays a very critical role today as well um, for, for us at a national level. There's programs in there. I've been heavily involved with the Internet Growth Acceleration Program and creating that program, which I think will help a lot of startups. There's a Leadership for Growth program, and now there's a new Accelerated Growth Engagement program. And that's, that's a new program which is now starting out at Cambridge as well. And we have Greg Lise, our head of Carapay, is, is, is going on that program. And they're very, very, very important because those, what those programs do is this learning that you can get on those programs becomes an instrumental part of changing your business. You won't change your business if you don't learn something new. So you have to go on these programs because through that mechanism you find out, you get connected to people, you get new ideas, new ways of doing things. And that's where, where, where I think it was very, very good for us. Teacher, when you took office, um, we had 50 staff working in this company. We now today, have a, well, as of last week, we had 120. As of today, we have 131. We've got 30% of our employees are female, which is one of the highest female to male ratios within the IT industry. 
Uh, we have people from 14 different nationalities right, in this company as well. And with the offices in Dublin, London and Paris, it's, it's, it is very, very different. We've got the average age, including me, I have to stress, <laughs> of the employees is 30, which is a very, very young team. And that's a very interesting statistic that shows you that what can be done and what can be achieved. And there are no barriers sometimes um, for us in, in terms of scaling. And right now, you know, the growth rate that we're experiencing, the business, as I say, is currently growing at about 40% year on year in terms of revenue. If last year, we, we, um, I think it was the start of last year, with something like 5,000 clients, and it took us like nearly 11 years to build up that base. At the end of this year, we'd have close to 12,000. So that this massive transformation that has come about is down to the strategy, I believe, and the strategic thinking that we take in terms of how we drive the business forward and getting that clarity of where you want to be in your business because it's extremely important to know where you want to go because without that you know, clarity about where you want to be, you're just going to end up in the wrong place. So I think for us, we have to be competitive, and that's very, very important for us because we compete internationally. We don't, our sales in Ireland are, 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 are flat. We won't grow the business. Ireland is the size of Birmingham in terms of a marketplace. It's simply not enough. So we have to sell and sell more. Our, our, our sales in the UK are growing by about 90% year on year. And that's what we need. That's the type of growth that we want to try to achieve. But to be competitive, we've got to keep our costs down. And that's a big challenge for us as well. But we, but we can and we do that. We have to constantly innovate. And we have to engage in regular and deep learning with the people, with our partners as well. We try to be different, and we try to be different by making sure that you know, we bring to our customers a very holistic and compelling experience. We want our customers to really feel that what they're getting from Relex and what they're now going to get from Carapay in the coming weeks is something that is very, very complete and very, very just a wonderful experience. And that's very important to put that word, a compelling experience in front of the payments industry is something that we're trying to do. And Carapay, as I say, is our first venture into the consumer space where we're providing payment solutions to consumers. And that current account is really like no other current account that you will have seen before. And we're hot on, the, on, on the, the time of getting that to market. It'll be a minimum viable product, as we say, in this first release. But nonetheless, it's taken years to get to this point in time. We've joined the clearing system in about 26 countries. We've been through license applications and so on. And we've put together now this current account, as I say, that, and we've got to try and work out now how we're going to get to market with that. But we're looking forward to that challenge. We've got a wonderful foreign direct investment ecosystem here. We've got some amazing companies just down the road from us. We get the opportunity to interact. Last night I had dinner and I was sitting beside the CEO of Facebook. You don't get those opportunities if you're not in an economy and in a place where there is direct foreign investment. And so the direct foreign investment for us is a very important aspect of helping us to grow as well. And it gives us further opportunities too. And we know that the, 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 you know, the presence of the foreign direct investment companies, I think, is a, a huge advantage for this. And it sends out a message for other companies that we're dealing with and whom we're trying to sell, particularly our managed services business. We can say, look, you're coming to the heart, the home of the internet in, in Europe. This is where it is. It's in Dublin. So don't be afraid of dealing with us. We're just down the road from these major corporations. And dealing with us is just, you know, that's what you want to be. So I think, I think there, are, there are challenges, having said that, and there are challenges, as we were saying, in terms of the, the, certainly the attraction and the retention of people. And you know, it's good to see Sean here, because I know that there are issues, and everybody in the IT sector faces those challenges in terms of trying to get the people that you need to grow your business, and it's extremely important that we do that. And in addition to looking at visas, I think, as well, one of the other ideas we had was, was looking at the idea where em employees within small indigenous Irish firms like this could participate in an equity participation program without having to pay the tax up front the way it is today. Because in a big company, you can do that because there's liquidity in the shares, but in a small company, you can't. So there are further things and further ideas that we have all the time. And what they do is they build an amazing environment of where business is good and where people want to take risk because that ultimately is what happens. And the more trade that we do, the more commerce we do, the better off we are from a welfare perspective. We generate more well-being in the society as a whole, which is what we want to do. So I really want to thank everybody who's here. I want to pay particular thanks to the management team because I, I never let them look back. I always tell them it's always about what's in front of them that's really important. And, you know, but yet it is important to acknowledge in a public environment like this as well the contribution that each of the management team have made and certainly their support that they give to me because they say you never do this alone. And uh, I'm very grateful for all of them for the work that they've done and the commitment that they have to achieve the very ambitious goals that we've set. 
So Tisha, thank you very much for coming here today. Your presence here today is, is very important to us. It's very meaningful to us. And it, it, it is, you know, it, it will be remembered. Thank you very, very much for that. Because uh, certainly we're going out there to try and, you know, scale this company and to try and make a big impact in the payments world. And it's great to know that we have your support. So thank you very much. Thank you.